greatest story ever told. Today, we present The Loaves and the Fishes, a drama based upon an event set forth in the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, an event from the greatest life ever lived. In the province of Galilee, this is the harvest season. And if one were to stand upon a hilltop and look down at the fertile plains one would see that most of the land is cleared of ripened wheat and barley. And here and there, one would spy sheaves of grain gathered and tied together and waiting only to be stored in the barns of industrious farmers. And on the land of one farmer, we find the young boy Gideon struggling under the great weight of such a sheaf as he makes his way into the small old barn. And now, having stored his produce, the boy comes into view again, and as he does, he calls out, Mother, Mother, it is finally finished. Do you hear me? Yes, Gideon. Yes, I hear you. What is it? The last of the grain has been safely stored away. Now the weather can't damage it, and I will have enough time to do the threshing. Then it means that we can start out now to find the master. Yes, Mother. And they will all be surprised when they see us arrive there. Why should they be surprised? Surely they know that whenever it's at all possible, we go to hear the master. Of course. But I know what they've been saying. A boy and his mother will never bring the harvest in by themselves. They think because they are older and stronger, they are better farmers than I am. But it is not so. I have never heard any of them make such remarks about you, Gideon. They must have been thinking that now that father is dead, we would be dependent upon them for their charity and their help. Well, we have proved it to them. We can survive on our own. Yes, my son, you have proved to them that you can plow and plant and reap and harvest very well for a boy your age. For a boy my age? I have done as well as any of them. And what's more, they are going to know it. What do you mean, Gideon? Nothing. You know, Mother, I have been thinking. This barn is many years old. It is indeed. Built by your father the year before we were married. Well, it is time we had a new one. But why, Gideon? This one is still in fairly good condition. Mother, we will be having more produce from now on. More than we had before. We have had a fine year, that is true. But that's the way it is in farming. Some years are better, some are worse. This was the best year that I can ever remember. And we should do something to celebrate it. A new barn, bigger than we've ever had before. That's what we will have. And then, my son, they will all know... No. ...that you are such a fine farmer. Better, perhaps, than your father was. Is that it? Why, no, Mother. That's not it at all. A bigger barn is what we need and what we shall have. And I have already thought it out. We shall keep enough grain for seed and to feed ourselves, and all the rest I will take to market and sell. And with the money, we shall build a barn. This is not what your father would have done. I am the man of the house now, Mother. But, Gideon, it is wasteful to spend money on something we do not really need. Besides, we must keep a store of grain against a bad year, and a few coins against whatever trouble might come. You only say that because you are afraid. Believe me, Mother, this year was good. But next year will be better. Oh, if only I could talk to you as your father might have told Mother, please. It is already noon. If we stand here talking, we will never reach the Lake of Galilee today. We will never see the master. But Gideon, it is important to talk about... Mother, if I can do the work of a man many years older than I, I would like to be treated that way. I have made my decision. Now let us start out if you have packed the food. Yes, Gideon, I have packed the food. Some small barley loaves and two small fishes. It will be enough to see us through the day. Good. There are yet some hours of daylight left. We will find them before the teaching is over. I am sure of that. Come, Mother. Gideon, so 
so many people gathered here at the shore of the lake. I have grown used to seeing hundreds of people gathered to see him. But this time, it, it seems like thousands, Mother. Thousands. They could not all have come from Capernaum. There must be many here from Magdala, from Arbella, even from Emmaus. I am only afraid the teaching is over for the day. I hope it is not so. We will find out when we press forward to the edge of the water. Please, sir. Please, let me through here. My mother and I must see him. And don't you think, Gideon, that I would like to see him, too? Abner! Mother, see who is here. It is Abner. Abner, how good it is to see you. Tell me, have you just arrived, too? Not at all, Sarah. I arrived here before dawn. I watched the sun come up, and it was fiery red, and it bathed his white robe in a color too beautiful to describe. I was here before any of them, and I have seen everything that happened. And I know now that I will never again see such a day as this. Why, Abner? Today I saw a man carried to the master. He was so sick that when they placed him at the master's feet, he hardly even breathed. And then the master said to him, Take up your bed and walk. And the man rose up and did as the master said. Oh, Abner, you saw this yourself? Yes, boy. If only we had seen it, Mother. Believe me, son, there was more. A great deal more. A blind man was healed here today. They led him to the master, but when he left, he needed no one to show him the way. Oh. I think it was from that moment on that the crowd began to grow so great. The people who saw these miracles sent word back to the towns along the lake, and people poured out to gather here until the crush of the crowd was so great that I tell you, I, I fear for the master's safety. Surely they would not seek to do him any harm. Of course not, but their admiration and their enthusiasm know no bounds. Thousands of people press forward to be near him, just to reach out and touch his garments. Such enthusiasm for the master is good to see, and yet, you know, in a way it makes me very sad. But why, Abner? You've always been one of those who felt that more people should know about the master's way of life. Exactly, Sarah. It is the teaching really counts. And I'm afraid somehow they are so eager to see miracles, they do not pay enough attention to the teaching. And you can't imagine the wonderful things that he taught today. Gideon, Sarah, listen to what he taught us. These are his very words. Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Abner, if such a spirit of love and forgiveness could prevail in this world, there would be an end to all man's troubles. Isn't that so, Gideon? Yes, Mother. Yet, wonderful as that was, Sarah, he said one thing which was even better that seemed to sum up all his teaching. And if a man were to remember that and nothing else, he would be a true follower of the master. You say there was one teaching which did all this? These are the words. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Oh, Gideon... If only we had been able to hear him say these words himself. Surely, Mother, we could not leave the harvest in the field. It would rot. I'm not blaming you, Gideon. Then tell me, Gideon, how was your harvest? The greatest harvest in all land in my lifetime. Really? So you don't believe it? Oh, I don't doubt your word, my boy. You are like the rest of them. Ever since my father died, you've been waiting for things to go wrong. You've been saying among yourselves, he's a good young boy, not able to take care of such a farm. Well, very soon you will see what kind of harvest I had. Believe me, Sarah, I did not mean to hurt the boy's feelings. You need not worry about me. Please, my son, Abner meant no harm. He was simply having neighborly curiosity. And you've grown angry and insulted him. This is no place for anger and harsh words. We have come here for only one purpose, to hear the master teach. I'm sorry, Mother. But you will have to grant me one thing. I was right in what I told you earlier. Well, I tell you now... I am more determined than ever to show them, to carry out my plan. Enough of this talk. Come, we must draw close to the master to hear everything he says. And see every miracle he performs. To me, his words are miracles. Oh, what's the matter? What's happened? Gideon, can you see it? I don't know yet. Wait. One of the master's disciples has just climbed up on that rock. 
He's going to speak. Yes, it is Peter. My friends, please, please listen to me. My friends, the master has been teaching you since early morning. And he has done many wonderful things as well. To accomplish all this, he has given much of himself. I ask that you allow him to rest now. Tomorrow, tomorrow when he is fresh and renewed in strength, he will teach you again. You know there is nothing he loves more than to teach you. But today... I heard that he told a sick man to take up his bed and walk, and the man did. We have heard all the wonderful things he has done this day. We wish to hear him now. Now, Master, please. So many of us have come here to listen. I'm sorry, my friends. Sorry. Philip, they will not let him go. There's only one way now. If we could clear a path for him to one of the boats on the shore. Exactly, Andrew. Only when we are finally aboard a boat and out on the lake will the master be able to rest. So you and Philip take places beside the master, and I will make a path for you through the crowd to the shore. One side, please. Make way for the master. One side. Master, this way. Follow me, master. Follow me. They will not give up, Peter. And who can blame them? Yet there is a limit even to the master's strength. We are doing what we must do. Well, Gideon, can you see over their heads? The master and his disciples have made their way to a boat. And they have just cast off from the shore. We are too late, Mother. Perhaps we are. Yet I feel that his disciples have done the right thing. Gideon, did you see his face? The cares of the world were in it. Believe me, one less strong than he could not carry such a burden. Yes, he needed the rest. We came all this way. Came so close to him. And now he is gone. Mother, perhaps we'd best go home, too. No, let us rest here. It is a good place for us to have our meal. You still have the basket, Gideon, don't you? Yes, Mother, here it is. I thought in the crush of the crowd you might have lost it. No, Mother. The loaves and the fishes are still in it. And as soon as the master's boat is out of sight, we will rest here and eat. But I do want to watch him as long as I... Gideon, what is it? Look, Mother, the whole crowd is starting to run. Is there some trouble? Maybe I know, Sarah. Oh, Abner, I didn't know you were still with us. Well, what is it? What do you think? Look, out there. See the master's boat? Notice that it is not headed out across the lake, but goes along the shore. That's right, sir. And with such a slight wind, it cannot go very fast. Exactly. So that's why everyone is running. They're following the boat. They wish to keep the master in sight as long as possible. Then come, Gideon. Come. We may yet hear the master after all. <laughs> And if he's going to teach any more, I will listen and tell you everything. I wish to hear it for myself. His voice alone gives me great comfort. We will go along with the others. But, Mother, you're tired and it may be useless. I am not turning back. Now come along and save your breath for running, not talking. Well, Andrew, 
No more wind than before. Not enough to carry us across the lake. Do you notice the master keeps a constant eye toward the shore? I almost wish he did not watch them. In the face of such love and devotion, who can refuse them? What do you mean, Peter? We'd better turn in to shore. They'll crowd around him. They'll want to touch him. In their fervor, they may hurt him. You can see for yourself, Andrew. He cannot rest while they wait for him. True. And swing the rudder over and turn the ship about. Well, Peter, soon the vessel will be scraping shore. And they'll be thronging around him again. Isn't that why he was sent? To draw the people to him? They see us coming in. Their first rush as we reach shore will be like a tidal wave rising out of the sea. I'll try to hold them back. But you keep a firm hand on the rudder. I'll do my part. We should be scraping the sand any moment. I'll tell the master. Master? Master? Peter! Peter! This way, master. This way. Uh, friends! Please, please! Allow the master to step on shore. He'll teach you. Only give him the chance, please. This way, master. Let me help. Master, please, teach us. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Mother, he said many wonderful things. Aren't you glad now we stayed with the crowd? Of course. But I think he's really finished teaching now. It's getting dark. The sun's gone out of the sky. Shouldn't we go home? No, we'll wait. But Mother, I'm hungry. It's long past mealtime now. And isn't it long past mealtime for everyone? If the others stay, we'll stay. Besides, we are the fortunate ones. At least we have some food with us. The others came empty-handed. It was just good fortune that we brought our little bit of food. Whoever expected we'd be so far from home at so late an hour. Can I ask him to speak again? After he's been teaching all afternoon? Yet I think he is going to speak again. Wait. He's speaking, but I can't hear him. Can you, Mother? Then maybe he speaks to his disciples alone. Come a little closer, Gideon. I must hear him. Now we're close enough. There's Peter talking to the master. So many thousands of people. And most of them so far from the town, they cannot be home for hours. Yet they are hungry now. Master, what can we do? Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Bread, master? For so many? We could not buy enough bread for as many people as are here even if each only had just a little, a crust. True, Master. Even if we had the money, who could sell us so much bread? There are thousands of people, Master. Thousands. Peter, maybe some of the people brought food with them. Wouldn't they share it with the others? We'll go among them and find out who has food and who's willing to share. Yes, Peter. Uh, come, Philip, John. We'll go out among the crowd. Mother, did you hear? Yes, Gideon. They're going to collect enough food to feed them all. But who else has food? I saw no one with any. We have so little. What good could that do? Still, if the others need it, we should give what we can. But Mother... It would only be wasted. We could not share this with a handful of people, much less with this crowd. Nevertheless, Gideon, whatever we have, we should share. The Master would want us to. Now go, give the basket to Andrew. But Mother, what good... Go, Gideon, do as I say. Yes, Mother... Sir? Yes, my boy? 
My mother and I, we heard the master's concern about food to feed all these people. We do not have much, but we wish to give what little we do have to what good it might do. It's kind of you to offer it. Very kind. We thank you. Before you start to thank me, sir, look here in the basket. Only five little barley loaves and two small fishes. Hardly enough for even a few people. And still you offer it? My mother offers it. Come with me, son. This way. Where are you taking me? To the master. To the master himself? Come along. This way through the crowd. Here, my boy. The master. I've never been so near to him before. You're closer to him than you think. For having given to help others is the best way to be close to him. But now I will report your kind offer. Master. Please, sir. Should you trouble him with so little? Be still, boy. Master, there's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fishes. Master, no. It's so little. Not enough to take notice of. Allow the master to decide that this is so little. He's looking at the loaves and fishes now. He said nothing. He is disappointed. I told you. Wait, boy. Wait. Make the people sit down. Yes, master. Uh, everyone, please. It's the master's request. Find places. Sit down. And now, master, what shall I do? He's reaching into the basket. Of course. I should have known, master. The loaves. You wish to bless them. Here, master. I'll spread the loaves out before you. Here. Five of them. They're blessed now. But now that he's blessed the bread, who's to eat it? The choice is his to make. Wait, he's motioning to the others. Peter, Philip, John. Yes, Andrew? May I help, Andrew? The master wishes us to help distribute this bread and these fish among all the people. So little for so many? It's as he wishes, Peter. Of course, Andrew. Master, my share to distribute... But, Master, you've given me all the loaves. Peter. Andrew, look. Look. He's given me five loaves and two fishes. And yet there's more left. More. And, and look. He fills Philip's arms. And still there's more. Sir, what I see... Yes, lad, we all see it. But come, my brothers, there's now much food. Let's distribute the food to the hungry. All this from only five loaves and two little fishes. My son, we saw it. How privileged we are. Yes, Mother. As close to the Master as I am to you right now. And everyone, all the thousands, had enough to eat from our little basket. We've seen a great miracle this day. Look at them now around the campfires, singing and happy. Well, only a little while ago, they were hungry. They've all had enough to eat. More than enough. Even we have some left over from our share. And I was ashamed to approach Andrew with the little we had to offer. If you had not insisted, Mother, I wouldn't have done it. You see, Gideon, your mother is right sometimes. Of course, Mother. Then, Gideon, remember what I said this morning. Please, Mother, I have made up my mind about that. Gideon, it shows no weakness to change your mind. It would be better to be frugal, to store up grain for next year, instead of selling it all to accomplish a vain purpose. It may be vain to you, but it is very important to me, and there is nothing for you to worry about. Isn't there? I told you, next year will be even better for us. I have plans. How can you be sure? Because in some way these things happen. 
If you put your mind to it, if you work at it, there's always enough somehow. Why, the master proved that to us. He saw it. Thousands of people, all hungry, all with nothing to eat. Only we. We had five loaves and two little fishes. And yet the master made it enough for all of us. Something always happens, Mother. So why should we save and scrimp? Please, Gideon, I'm only advising you for your own good. I tell you it was a sign, an omen from the master. When there was once little, he provided a feast for everyone. Gideon, Gideon, I wish I were able to show you how wrong you are. After what I've seen, nothing you can say will convince me. Why, I... Oh, you, sir. Peter. Yes, my boy. Well, have you eaten enough? We have, sir. Then will you be good enough to help us? Help you? But everyone is already fed. Now that they are, we have work to do. First, may I have the food that you have left? Didn't you have enough? Surely everyone else did. Oh, I had my fill, but I'm gathering up what is left. All his disciples are gathering up the fragments now. We've already filled almost 12 baskets just with fragments. You can help. But why? What for? Because it was his word. Only a few moments ago. He gathered us to him and spoke to us in these words. Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Sir, the master said that? Yes, my boy. He performed a great miracle. He provided so much food from so little that we couldn't even eat it all. Why should one who can produce such a miracle care about fragments? Because it would be wasteful to do otherwise. Why should he care about waste? He can perform another miracle and produce more. Why should he be concerned about what is left over? Because one should not waste, even amid plenty. So will you help us? Yes, of course. But, sir, Peter, may I talk to my mother for just a moment, please? Surely, son. But remember, we'll be counting on your help. Well, Gideon, what was it you wanted to say? Mother... I want to say I was wrong. That I'm sorry. I never expected that the master himself, who can work such miracles, who can create such plenty out of want, that he would care about the fragments, would worry about their being wasted. You must be right, Mother. I know it now. If God provides in abundance, isn't it sinful for us to waste what he has provided? Is it right to repay his goodness with wastefulness? You see, Gideon, it's our duty to preserve his gift, even as the Master has instructed his disciples to do now. We must make use of the blessings of God in such a way as the Master said, that nothing be lost. Mm -hmm. 